And we say good morning to you on a Wednesday. You made it to the middle of the week on this hump day, 530. We're having a good old time this morning. A lot of news <laughs> to get to. Live look outside. City still waking up, still yawning and a stretching. Pouring that second cup ah, of coffee, maybe. There it no is. judgment. Yeah. yeah, no judgment. We're all still yawning and stretching. Squad's all here. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look. Yes. Squad is here. Good morning, everyone, on your hump day. Wow, we're really getting it going today, aren't we? Kaylee O'Kelly is off. Iris tracking another warm day. We're going to check in her with just a moment. She's got a few more stretches to do. Yes. In the meantime, Megan's back. So how are the roads looking? Uh, they're looking pretty good here on a Wednesday morning on this hump day. So we get a check of traffic sponsored by Accident Law Group. Allison, Nick. Iris, good morning to all of you at home. This is the I-10 eastbound near Avondale Boulevard. I've been showing you this crash over the last half hour or so. It's been off to the right hand side. It is in the clearing stages, so that's great news. If you're about to head out the door, we don't want anything to slow you down. So that area in the West Valley does look OK. However, we are starting to see that slowing already on spots on the I-10 eastbound a little bit further as you're getting past the loop 101 as you're making your way towards the stack. Your speed's dropping near 43rd Avenue, just below 40 miles per hour. So let's take you to a live picture of that scene. This is where we see all those headlights beaming here in this area as we await that sunrise. Zooming out to show you a wide view. If you're coming from the East Valley, you're coming from the north half of the valley, you're giving nice green conditions. Here are those desert drive times, 24 minutes on the I-10 eastbound from the Loop 303 to the mini stack. Now let's get a check of that most accurate forecast, those warmer days, Iris. I don't know, Nick says he likes them. Yeah. It's a little nerve wracking for me. Yeah, because we know what's around the corner, right? But don't worry, we've got some nice changes in the seven day forecast. We've got 80s for Nick and warmer weather, some 70s for Megan too. a little bit of rain and some winds mixed in as well. So a lot happening in our seven day. But today we're starting out with some clouds and that's what's making for a little bit of a milder start. Our temperature is only at 61 degrees, but your morning drive looking dry as those clouds will actually clear through the early morning. And I think by sunrise, we're already going to be back to mostly clear conditions with that temperature dipping into the upper 50s by 7 a.m. Then we're right back into the 60s by 8 o'clock. And today, look for a high of 85, just one degree lower than yesterday. More winds in the forecast, though, as we track another storm system. We'll talk about how strong those winds will be in that storm, where it's going to bring some rain chances in just minutes. Now happening right now, Chandler police are searching for a shooting suspect after a victim was shot in the hand. This unfolding near Arizona Avenue and Warner officers telling us the victim was leaving for work and the suspect was in his car. The suspect then opened fire several times, hitting the victim once in the hand. Crews are actively searching for that suspect. Well, a new day, a new record for gas prices. AAA saying Arizona is not following the national uh, pace and prices are going up instead of down here. This morning we're paying on average 462 a gallon for regular unleaded, while the national average is 32 cents cheaper right now. And you know, to try and help out with the rising cost of gas, some rideshare companies are actually going to be tacking on some extra fees. But those fees are getting passed on to all of us in our ride shares. ABC 15's Amelia Fabiano joining us live right now. Amelia, Uber really was the first one to make this move. Yeah, Uber and now Lyft has joined them as well. And a lot of us might be taking ride shares these days with so much going on in the valley. You know, we have spring training starting up this week. Maybe you want to take an Uber out here to Tempe Diablo Stadium. Well, you'll notice that extra fee on your receipt starting today. 45 to 55 cents extra per ride, 35 to 45 cents extra per Uber Eats order. Because remember, you can do that as well. In a press release, the company said the surcharges are based off the average trip distance and increase in gas prices in each state. This is going on across the country except for New York City. All of that money is going directly back to the drivers. As I said, Lyft is also following suit, although they did not specify how much extra passengers will pay or exactly when their surcharge will go into effect. I spoke to some rideshare drivers here in the Valley, though, and they tell me what the Uber surcharge does not take into account are the types of Uber vehicles available. It costs a lot more to fill up an SUV or a truck than, say, a smaller sedan, right? And while they appreciate the initiative to help, they don't think it's enough. Many of them shelling out double what they typically pay to fill up their tanks. It's not much. I know they're trying to help, but the help doesn't go far enough. We're the ones helping them stay in business, so we'd appreciate them if they would just go a little bit extra to be able to give us the money we need really to, you know, provide for our families and be able to have the gas money that we need to be able to be efficient and be out there for them. 
yeah, have to make ends meet, right? So Uber did say in its press release they're going to have this surcharge in effect for 60 days. After that, they're going to reassess. They also mentioned they're going to take into consideration feedback from riders, passengers, and drivers, of course, as well. And Nick, they're also closely monitoring gas prices as well. Back to you. Yeah, hopefully uh, that would give some relief to them and to the rest of us. Our Amelia Fabiano live with that update for us. Well, Little Miss Nobody finally has a name. She is somebody after 62 years. Authorities identifying the child's remains as Sharon Lee Gallegos. Othram Labs played a key role here in finding the child's identity. The Houston-based company has 30 team members, all with medical backgrounds, and their only customer right now is law enforcement. Now, the labs, they use genome sequencing, which looks for hundreds of thousands of markers. They say the wider the net they're able to cast, they're able to, you know, include someone's family tree in there, gets them a hit and somewhere to go and a lead, right? So the lab, they're hoping that the more cases they take on, this is going to lead to an overall decline in crime. If you've left DNA at a crime scene, it's not, it's not if you'll get caught, it's, it's when you'll get caught. Now, after helping identify Gallegos, Othram Labs telling ABC 15 they're going to be sticking around here in Arizona for a couple more days. They're going to see if they can help out with dozens of other cold cases in our state. New images coming out of Kyiv, Ukraine this morning after artillery shelling hit a 12 story building there. The top floor obliterated this morning. It comes as Ukraine's president prepares to address a joint session of Congress in about 30 minutes, appealing for more help from the U.S. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. A source tells ABC News the Russian infantry is suffering from low morale, but at the same time, they're setting up to further intensify Putin's war in Ukraine. As Russian forces continue their deadly advance in Ukraine, President Zelensky, in his most optimistic assessment yet, raising hope for peace in the war. Zelensky stressing patience with the negotiations, but says Russia's demands in the peace talks are sounding more realistic. However, U.S. State Department officials caution Russia is not negotiating in good faith. We have yet to find a Russian interlocutor that is either able or willing uh, to negotiate in good faith and certainly not in the context of de-escalation. Russian rockets and missiles are still doing significant damage across Ukraine. The bombs indiscriminately hitting residential neighborhoods, hospitals and other civilian targets. The capital city of Kyiv under a mandatory 35 hour curfew. A source tells ABC News the Russian onslaught here could intensify even more. Back in Washington, ahead of his virtual speech to Congress today, a source tells ABC News that there are fears and anxiety over Zelensky's safety in Ukraine, and that the U.S. and key allies are exploring more ways to help Ukraine, including sending armed drones to the front lines. And President Biden will be in Brussels next week for the NATO summit. He'll be talking to allies about deterrence and defense efforts against Putin's war. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Faith, thank you. You can catch President Zelensky's address in about 30 minutes. ABC 15 will be carrying it for you live. Spring forward and fall back. Two phrases we hear every single year. Not that we do it. And but. when the clocks change, we all have family calling us, asking us the same thing. <laughs> what time is it there in Arizona? That could soon change. Yeah, Jamie Warren live with an issue that has Republicans and Democrats finally agreeing with each other. Jamie? Nick and Allison, they are finally agreeing on this one. So as you mentioned, here in Arizona, we do not have to deal with this. But if you have family, maybe in other parts of the country, you might have something like this on your phone, letting you know exactly what time it is before you call them. So this would help you avoid some of that confusion. This was just passed by the U.S. Senate, which means it still needs to get through the House before heading to the president's desk. But it is about halfway there. The bill would make daylight saving time permanent. This legislation is called the Sunshine Protection Act. It would allow us in Arizona as well as Hawaii, which do not observe daylight saving time, to remain on standard time. And for everyone else, it would put an end to the practice of turning your clocks back one hour every November. Opponents of this idea say that it would end up forcing kids to go to school in the dark. But supporters say it would actually allow kids more time to play outside and also reduce seasonal depression. Good news is if we can get this passed, 
We don't have to keep doing this stupidity anymore. And uh, why we would enshrine this in our laws and keep it for so long is beyond me. But hopefully this is the year that this gets done. And pardon the pun, but this is an idea whose time has come. Any parent who has worked so hard to get a newborn or a toddler on a regular sleeping schedule understands the absolute chaos changing our clocks creates, and for no good reason. So daylight saving time has been in place in nearly all of the United States since the 1960s. Arizona opted out of the idea in 1967, and our clocks have stayed the same ever since. So if this were to go into law here, it would basically make us be aligned with the Pacific Coast, meaning if you have family back east, you'd basically just tell them, hey, you're always going to be three hours ahead of us. For now, reporting live in Phoenix, Jamie Warren, ABC 15, Arizona. All right, Jamie Warren reporting live for us. We appreciate it. Smart shoppers, we know flights are getting more and more expensive. So take advantage of the sale going on from Southwest Airlines. I just tried to book a flight for my sister. It was like $1,000. It was crazy. So uh, you can score a flight for as low as $49. Save yourself a lot of money and headaches, right? Some deals that we actually found from Sky Harbor included Albuquerque for less than 70 bucks, Austin for $119, and get this, Hawaii, how about a vacation, $194. You do have to book by tomorrow, and you have to travel from April 5th through June 15th. So hopefully you got some of that PTO saved up. I'm John Matteritz. It's not just home prices that are soaring. Rents are going up sharply, too. I'll tell you why and some things you might be able to do about it. Coming up. In today's top stories, the CDC is keeping an eye on a variant of COVID Omicron strain. The agency is saying this new variant is making up about 25% of new COVID cases, and that's up from 10% last week. Most of these new cases are located in the Northeast. Oil prices, they do appear to be heading back up. Prices face some pressure due to surging COVID cases out in China, which is the second largest oil consumer. Experts say the war in Ukraine and ceasefire talks are the latest concern for the oil market. The nationwide mask mandate on public transportation could soon end. The Senate passed a bill that aims to undo the extended federal regulation requiring face masks on planes, trains and subways. Just last week, the Biden administration extended that requirement through April 18th, and now it's going to head to the House. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Time check for you, 545. Let's get you a check of traffic now. Starting to see some slowing on the 17 southbound. This spot where I put this marker showing that speed is right around Camelback Road. That's 32 miles per hour. Zooming in to show you that live picture. Here are those southbound lanes of folks likely heading towards this stack where we're seeing just a little bit of that slowing through that stretch. Also checking in on the Loop 101 Algo Fria southbound as you're making your way onto the I-10 interchange, your speed's dropping to about 22 miles per hour, 45 miles per hour as you're making your way towards the stack on the 10. Here are those desert drive times. We have dumped, jumped into the yellow 29 minutes on the I-10 eastbound from the Loop 303 to the mini stack. Still overall staying in the green on the 17 despite some of that slowing and 13 minutes on the 51. As we look at traffic predictor though on the I-10 from the Loop 303 to the mini stack, this is tracking a speed right around 48 miles per hour, Nick, right around that 6 a.m. time frame. So we'll continue to check in with traffic predictor. I know we like to see what our viewers can expect when they head out the door over the next half hour, hour or so. And you're so good at it, Megan. So we're glad you're with us today. Hey, it's the middle of the month and you're already scrambling in anticipation of rent coming due on the first. Are you one of the millions of Americans that's facing a rent hike this year? As consumer reporter John Mattery's found out, there are some things you can do about it. Soaring home prices may get all the attention, but for many people, their rent is rising to insane levels too this year. That's going to hurt me tremendously. Nurses aide Diamond Trimble just received this letter from her landlord, informing her that her rent is about to go up from $650 to $1,025, over 30% next month. I got the letter February 23rd. So 30 days. But she says her apartment is in terrible condition with broken window treatments, Nasty blinds. a moldy bathroom ceiling, and an oven that hasn't worked in months. That doesn't work? No, nope, doesn't cut on. The landlord is promising some renovations, but Diamond says she wants to see them first. Can you afford this? No. 
I cannot afford a thousand twenty five dollar rent. If I could, I will not be staying here. This is happening more and more these days as landlords who didn't raise rent during the pandemic are now trying to recoup some of those losses. And that can mean a 10, 20, even 40 percent rent hike in some cases when a lease comes due. When that lease is over or if the tenant is what's called a month to month tenant, then the landlord only has to give 30 days notice before increasing the rent. Attorney Nick DiNardo of Legal Aid says while some cities have rent control, prohibiting rent hikes of over 5 or 10 percent, most communities do not. The only thing a tenant can do at that point is negotiate. Legal Aid suggests that you explain why you can't afford the rent hike. Offer to do some work around the complex to keep your rent down. Finally, ask for a few extra months to find a new place. Diamond says she's going to have to move. It's nothing. I can do, I can say, is basically either pay or leave. We called the landlord who said she was within her legal rights to raise the rent. So make sure you're locked into a good one-year lease so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Time right now is 548. Let's talk temperatures around the valley because it's not that cold this morning. In fact, temperatures are running milder than even the last few mornings, and it's thanks to some clouds that have moved in across our state. I promise you we'd see them overnight, and we're still seeing them across Arizona this morning. They'll stick around for the next hour or so and then really start to clear from west to east through the early morning before we see mostly sunny skies the rest of the day. But again, because of those clouds and because of yesterday's warm weather, our temperatures have been slow to cool overnight, and that puts us in the 50s to 60s around the valley. You're not going to see any 40s as you walk outside, at least not at this hour. It's 57 in Gilbert, 61 though in Queen Creek and Ahwatukee also holding on to those low 60s. 63 in Deer Valley. Anthem, you're checking in at 58 degrees. We're at 53 in Surprise, 52 in Levine and Maricopa. Good morning, you're checking in right at 53 degrees as well. Across Arizona, look at those temperatures up north. It's below freezing, but it's not as cold as even yesterday with that temperature in Flagstaff, just a couple degrees below freezing at 32 right now. It's 37 in Heber, 43 in Payson, we're at 52 in Casa Grande and Sky Harbor right at 61 degrees. So as you look at clouds and radar, you're going to see those thin clouds across our state, although they're hard to spot this morning. The thicker ones starting to shift into eastern Arizona, and we're already starting to clear in western Arizona with the valley looking for clearing skies early this morning, too. You'll get a better view of that moisture on our water vapor imagery. You see these areas in white and blue. That's that moisture that's moving in in the form of those high clouds. They're pushing to the east, and they're moving out ahead of this area area of low pressure, this darker spot on our water vapor imagery indicating where that storm is. That storm is actually heading into northern Arizona today. It will bring the clouds, of course, that it's brought overnight and then it's going to clear them out before it moves in. But it's also going to bring some stronger winds today and a slight chance for showers from about the muggy on rim up into northeast Arizona today. And we're talking rain showers with this one mainly as those snow levels remain pretty high. I'm not expecting much in terms of snow accumulation up north. Instead, look for showers, maybe a few thunderstorms in the high country, the valley staying dry. Then this storm's out of here. Temperatures dip slightly to finish out the week. We've got another warm up though Saturday. More clouds Saturday too ahead of this next storm and that one will be colder. It's also going to bring a better chance for rain to the valley and to northern Arizona. So here's what to expect. We've got a storm moving through northern Arizona today. Look for gusty winds statewide including here in the valley with gusts here as high as 25 to 30 miles an hour. Showers up north. Warm weather will continue overall. We'll see a slight dip in temperatures but low 80s still tomorrow and Friday. That still puts us 5 to 10 degrees above normal and then this weekend warm Saturday, but then cooler breezy with rain chances on Sunday. How much cooler? Well, look at those temperatures. We'll go from 87 for a high Saturday to 72 Sunday cooler up north too. 554 now to the misunderstanding of epic proportions for one man staying in an Airbnb in South Florida. Yeah, he crawled into the wrong bed. Ooh. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more. It was the end of an insanely long travel day for Paul Drexler, journeying from Ecuador to Miami for a friend's wedding. By the time he got through customs, caught an Uber, and made it to his Airbnb, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. Paul followed each of the instructions from the Airbnb host. There's a gate, and we've left it unlocked for you. Oh, there's the gate. Open the gate. Unlocked for me. Perfect. When you enter the gate... There's going to be a dog. There's the dog. Check two. You know, Paul climbing into bed and crashing. The only problem that wasn't Paul's bed. Were there any red flags once you got inside that you were like, this feels a little weird? Absolutely. Now, in, in hindsight, my first thought was this place looks a little bit messy like it lived in. 
But for Paul, who travels full-time and has stayed in hundreds of Airbnbs, it wasn't the worst one he'd been in. So Paul went to sleep, waking up at 8 a.m. the next morning to knocking on the bedroom door. I wake up, I'm like, yes. I remember thinking, this is kind of strange that the Airbnb host is, is entering the premises and, and bothering me this morning. Uh, he goes, hey, man, this is, uh, this is my house. Can I help you? And I was like, um, this is an Airbnb that I rented. And he goes really calmly, no, this is my house. The homeowner that Paul crashed helped him find the right address. It was the house next door. I believe he may have used the guest house as his office. The bedroom was maybe a guest bedroom set up for guests, not me, obviously. That's the guest bedroom for people who are invited. <laughs> Glad it all ended okay. Hey, this is the first March Madness that sports betting is legal here in Arizona. And with the Arizona Wildcats a number one seed in the NCAA men's tournament, you can bet the money is going to be put to use in a variety of ways. We have bets that are related to what state you're from. We have bets um, that are related to points in the first half, odds or evens. There are so many different uh, types of events that we are offering right now. Sports books offering in-person and online betting through apps. When it comes to college mascots, which ones reign supreme? USA Today releasing its sixth annual list for 68 teams in the NCAA tournament. The University of Arizona may be a number one seed, but the Wildcats sit 64th on the list because the Wildcat is uh, a popular mascot. So sorry, Wilbur. <laughs> but by the way, coming in first on the list, the San Francisco Dons. How do you like that? I don't know what a Don is. Like a Don Juan, like a someone with some swag. Okay, Bob is saying yes. All right.